You know, the big problem with growth hormone is that it decreases with age. So if you're noticing uh, various things with your joints, with your muscles, it could be the decline in growth hormone. But growth hormone is involved in uh, fat burning. It's involved in building up collagen and cartilage and muscle. And it also helps your endurance when you exercise. So it's involved in performance. It also helps you recover if you have trauma, like whether from an injury, surgery, or even a stroke. And it's also involved in the cognitive function of your brain. So if you're low in growth hormone, you may find that that can affect your memory, your focus, and your concentration. Also, if you are a young person um, and you don't have enough growth hormone, it can actually make you a bit shorter than you should. Now, I'm definitely not going to recommend you take growth hormone. Um, it's probably a big problem in sports, but you don't need to do that, okay? There are natural things that you can do to boost growth hormone to counter this aging process. It all starts with a hypothalamus, okay? So you got this hypothalamus up in the brain that sends a signal down and tells the pituitary to release growth hormone. So the growth hormone is created by the pituitary, but there's another hormone up here that tells the pituitary to create growth hormone. And then growth hormone goes right to your liver and it works through another hormone called IGF number one, insulin-like growth factor number one. So in other words, IGF number one does the work of growth hormone. So I just wanna talk about what will stimulate or boost growth hormone. And then on the flip side, what will inhibit or suppress growth hormone? Well, guess what? In the deep uh, part of your sleep, when you hit the delta wave, that's when you have a major release of growth hormone. So of course, if you're not sleeping, you're not going to have nearly as much growth hormone. So sleep is a very potent way to keep the growth hormone doing its job. Number two, intense exercise, okay? Not mild exercise, but intense exercise. The more intense, the more growth hormone stimulation. So you have the potential to increase your growth hormone by up to a thousand percent if you do intense exercise. And I think out of all the exercises, sprinting is at the top of the list, but there's a lot of other ones that you could do to increase your pulse rate and use your whole body to really activate um, this intensity that you need to do. Um, just kind of walking on the treadmill is not going to do much to growth hormones. You're going to have to really use a lot of effort, okay? Intense effort. But guess what? If you overtrain and you don't get enough sleep, then you're, it's probably not going to work. So we want to do this intense exercise without overtraining. This is why we want to do high intensity interval training, okay? Short duration, lots of rest. Low blood sugars are another uh, powerful way to stimulate growth hormone, right? So guess what? That's on the keto plan. That's on a low carb diet. So unfortunately, diabetics who have high amounts of sugar in their blood, because they're not told about this dietary sugar and carbohydrate connection, actually, it's all about just managing your blood sugars. They usually have very low growth hormone levels. So we want to keep the blood sugars low to trigger growth hormone. Number four, amino acids, so protein. So you need protein to stimulate growth hormone. So if you're not getting enough protein, guess what? You're not going to have enough growth hormone. There are several amino acids that will trigger growth hormone, but the big one is arginine. In one study, uh, they found that you have to take between five and nine grams of it to increase growth hormone by 100%. Okay. Now, I'm not recommending that you go out and get arginine. I don't think you're going to need to do it. I just wanted to bring it up as a potential thing to increase your uh, growth hormone. Sometimes um, people are concerned about taking protein, especially branched amino acids when they're fasting and having that increase their blood glucose levels. And that can do it, but apparently arginine uh, won't increase your blood sugar level. So that's interesting, good to know. Also, there is a very unique amino acid blend that I recommend for certain people that need to maintain their muscle mass uh, during fasting that doesn't have the same effect of other proteins of turning into sugar. It's like, I think 99.8% of it turns into muscle tissue. So you don't have that stimulation of glucose, which is good. So I will put that link down below if you fit into that category 
But typically when you eat protein, that's gonna turn into glucose, that's gonna increase insulin, and that's gonna knock you out of the benefits of fasting. But the point is that you need sufficient amino acids if you want to increase growth hormone. Number five, fasting. Fasting has the largest influence over growth hormone, okay? You can potentially increase growth hormone by up to 2,000% if you're a male. If you're female, you can increase it by 1,300%. So this is really, really powerful. So I'm definitely recommending sleeping more, sleeping deeply, adding fasting, okay, doing keto and intense exercise. Those are the, the key factors here. But then you also uh, have niacin, which is vitamin B3 that has the potential to increase growth hormone. Not by a lot, but it can definitely boost it. And then we have vitamin D, okay, that you can get from the sun. No cost to that. And that can increase growth hormone. Let's talk about what can inhibit growth hormone. You got stress and cortisol, right? Which is going to affect your sleep. The more cortisol that you're exposed to, let's say from a medication, you're in prednisone, for example, um, the more stress you have, the less growth hormone you're going to have. So if your diet is high carbohydrate, uh, you're not going to have nearly the amount of growth hormone that you really need. Also goes along with this hyperinsulinemia, okay? So of course, if you're eating sugar, you're gonna have high insulin, but high insulin also will knock down growth hormone, especially if it's sustained or chronic elevation insulin where you see um, you know, the great majority of the population um, and also prediabetes and also the first part of diabetes where your body's compensating, but eventually, the pancreas runs out of insulin, and then now the blood sugars go really, really high. So then, of course, the doctor might even give you more insulin to regulate your blood sugars. All right, next one, obesity. So the bigger you are, fat-wise, the less growth hormone you're going to have. Why? Probably because of this right here, hyperinsulinemia. All right, next one is low thyroid. If your thyroid is not working correctly, you're not going to be able to nearly produce enough growth hormone. Now, since growth hormone works through the liver, we need a healthy liver for that to work. So the more damage you have in your liver, the less growth hormone you're going to have. And I'm talking about a fatty liver, I'm talking about an inflamed liver, and also cirrhosis of the liver. Alcohol has a uh, pretty potent uh, inhibitory or suppressive effect over growth hormone, okay? And of course, age. As you age, uh, you have less growth hormone. So we're really trying to do all these things to compensate for this darn aging thing that we're, we're forced to deal with. So there you have it, kind of uh, growth hormone in a nutshell. And I think at this point, it'd be very, very smart to get a little more information about the main organ that you have growth hormone connecting to. So check out this video on the liver.